know, Tommy. Is your dollhouse rotting? <laughs> What's going on? No, actually, the dollhouse is not rotting because it's flashed correctly. It's the only house that's not subject to rot. Right, right, exactly. So you got to look out for different things. You could have a fascia board that's rotted because the overhang of the shingles aren't correct. Right. Little things like that you have to work out for. So the first thing to be thinking about is prevention. You want to get the yeah. water away from the house as much as possible. You're less likely to get rot. Right, not having wood too close to the bottom or the ground is important also. But as we all know, no matter what we do, we always end up with some type of rot right. from various reasons. And usually it starts with signs like this, ah. all right? So this could be a board that, that ran across the bottom of a house. It could be a fascia board behind a gutter. But if you notice, you have peeling paint. Yep. And that sign, that peeling paint, is usually because there's water getting behind the wood. Right. And when the sun comes out, it wants to dry the wood, but it pulls the moisture with it, and the moisture gets behind the paint and flakes it off the board. It's literally pushing from behind and kind of blowing the paint yep. off of the surface. Yep, yep. That's why back priming wood yep. is very important. Okay. So if that's a telltale sign, this is certainly a telltale sign too, right? Yep. It starts to literally just get punky, and it starts to just go away. Yeah, right. If you look at these holes right there, these are actually caused by carpenter ants. And carpenter ants will form when the wood is wet or damp and the conditions are right because they like to nest in the wood. Carpenter ants will take the wood and move it out of the way to make room for their nest. Termites will eat the wood. Gotcha. Okay. So we have to think about prevention. Um, mm -hmm. If we do end up getting rot like this, um, obviously you could just tear it out, throw it away, and replace it. But yeah, I mean that's not always easy. Like I just had some rot on some window sills, and I was like, I'm not taking these window sills out. Yeah, I mean the corners down here is where you're going to usually see a rot, and that usually is a flashing up here. The water runs down. Right. Maybe the siding where it meets the trim, like for example, the water migrates through there and it comes down and collects inside and rots that. Right. Side. And to take that out is a big work. It was way more work than just fixing it in place, which was what I decided yeah. to do. Yeah. So let's talk about fixing it in place. So you can fix it in place, but the first thing you want to do is you want to try to remove as much of the rot that you can and leaving it so you end up with some substance to the wood. You called it punky before, but you can see you know, some of this stuff it literally yeah. would just come off with your finger. Yeah, but if you notice, the more you remove, it starts to feel better. It's, yep. a, it's just a better feel to the wood. But again, you're not going to remove it all. So a little harder in the center right there. Right. So, so scrape it away? Scrape it away, clean it away, sand it away, whatever you need to do, and make sure it's then clean. Gotcha. All right. And then you can prime the wood or prep the wood with this product right here. And this is a two-part product, actually. Well, hey, should I say three part? The first stage and then the second stage. So the first stage here, this is called a restorer. And yep. uh, if I open this up, so a clear liquid. A lot of solvent in right yep. that comes yep. with a brush. Yeah, and so you want to put, you want to brush on about four to six coats of that, and you want to wait about two minutes between each time for it to set up, and then that will go into the fibers of the damaged part and get to the good part and harden the soft wood. Because you want to make sure that you are actually down the hard wood, and if it's a little soft, harden up with the restorer. Exactly. So the wood. Basically, it's prep work. It's like if you're painting a wall. If you don't prep it right, the paint's not going to hold up. So you want to remove all the loose debris to get down nice and clean right here. So it looks like you sanded this end. This is sort of the dirty end. You sanded this end, dug it out, put the restorer in there, it's set up. Now what do we do? Right. Well, then there's a filler that you can use. This is a formula that is for wood. And there's other companies that make it too. I mean, I use one that is basically the same process. So I have to put the primer in there first. Wait a few time, wait a few minutes for it to set up, and then you put the uh, filler into that. So you said this is a two-parter. This is a two-part. The first part is you want to lay a piece down like this, about a three-inch circle. Gotcha. And this one here, this tube says uh, cream hardener, so that's pretty yeah. self-explanatory, right? So now what you want to do is you also you don't want to use more hardener than required. You're better off using just a slightly less than more. So let's say that's about a three inch circle and it's about half an inch thick. Mm -hmm. Take some of this and you just run a strip across, right across like, like that. Again, not too thick. All right, and then you just fold it into the mix. It's pretty interesting that they give you a different color hardener so that you can kind of see this, the difference in the two. Yeah, so you and can see the color, how it starts to change, and that way you'll get it all through it. So you want to make sure it's mixed thoroughly. Gotcha. What are you mixing on there? That's not wood. Is that, is that a PVC? This is a piece of PVC. You can use a piece of glass. Anything that's non-porous because you don't want to take the chemicals out of the mix. 
So I presume that you can make more or less so long as the ratio is the same. If you don't do a three inch circle, half inch thick, you could do a two inch circle. And then when you put this bead across it, it's just gonna be a smaller diameter. Yeah, it's um, a smaller diameter. bead, exactly. Gotcha. And I would also suggest don't mix up too much at once because right. you don't want to lose it. I mean, you've got some time, but you'd be surprised, especially if you're doing it in the hot sun, it will set up quick. Okay, so how are we looking there? I think we got it mixed pretty good. The color looks even. Well, this is not a clean work surface, but I'll give you a little something right there. Yeah. Looks like your hardener's only on this little spot right there. Right. So you just you just take it and you force it into the wood, work it around. I've mixed up. Obviously, I've mixed up too much, but I I did that first to show you how you do it, the mm -hmm. ratio and stuff. So I'm going to work it in. All right. Make sure it's in there nice. Get any bubbles out of there. You see that little bubble right there? Yep, I do. Get right down in there. All right, so now that it's in there, I'll take another knife, putty knife, and I'll drag it across. Oh, yeah. Make it nice and flat. You gotta fill that void in. You know, it's like it's almost like putting a joint compound right. on drywall. Right. You know, you put it on, you want to have a little extra to sand it off. Yeah, because this is gonna you're gonna sand over this once it's dry. Yeah. Before you paint it, right? Yep. And then, uh, is this like a one hour setup, eight hour setup? You coming back the next day generally? Uh, no, you should be able to do it uh, in a few, a couple of hours. But uh, again, if, it's, if you're doing it in the hot sun, it'll set up even faster than it will in the cool weather. So a couple imperfections, but as you say, so long as it's high, it's you'll high. be able to sand it down and, and get And I also went much, I went larger than the area that was pre-treated. Yep. So that should bond well, and all of this will sand down and the patch will be smaller and we'll have a good fix. And uh, it's gonna be a good fix for something up on a second story. We don't wanna take up the whole cell. Exactly. Again, you wanna make sure that the, the joints are cocked nice and tight like they should be when you do at the end of the seasons and you wanna check your flashing to make sure that's right. Gotcha. All right, Tommy, thank you. All right, my pleasure. It's always good to see your dollhouse again. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.